So, start of chapter two. Uh, as you can see here, there were basically three ways that you've been at least taught how to solve what are called systems of equations. A system of equation means that you have various equations with various unknowns. Right? Uh, some are obviously easier than others. Uh, the first way we're going to take a look at it today is graphically, and again, we'll do that on the graphing calculators because they're much more exact than you doing it by hand. And then we'll do elimination and substitution. All methods are uh, equally as accurate if done properly. Right? And what we're really looking for is where do the equations share an answer? Or where do the equations connect or intersect, hit each other, whatever you want to say? So we have two here, and I'm going to have to write them on the other board here. So y equals negative one-half x, and y equals three halves x plus four. And what we're going to do is I think we can both agree those are both lines. Fairly straightforward, and I've even given them to you in y equals form. You don't even have to do any work. The reason you want them in y equals form is when you go to a graphing calculator, that's what it's going to prefer. Okay, but again, let's make sure that nobody has done anything goofy to your calculator. I know I saw one the other day that things were just all over the place, and then they tried to do math, and it really didn't want to. And so it's probably best to have them all on the left. It really, a lot of them don't matter, but it's, it's best just to tell you that. Everybody ready? Okay, if we are going to graph, the easiest place to go, and you can just quit out of there, you guys go to y equals. Now, if you do have information in there, like maybe you got something like that, who knows? All you have to do is just clear right out of there, and it'll, it'll get it out of there. Make sure that none of these up here are highlighted, plot one, two, or three. If they have like a black box around them and highlighted, that's bad. If you have that, let me know. So the first thing we're going to do is type in negative one-half x. So make sure you hit the right negative. It's this one down here. I like to be very careful with my fractions, because okay? you know this knows order of operations. I don't want to do anything wrong. Whenever I put fractions in, I like to put parentheses around them. Okay, so negative one divided by two. That's how you type in negative one half. Okay, and I have to put an x in there. So make sure you hit the right x. It's this one right up here. It stands for the variables. It's x, t, theta, and n. So let's go ahead and I have to orientate apparently. So we got negative one half x sitting right there. Okay, so once you have that one done, everybody good? All you have to do is hit the down arrow, and it'll let you go to y sub 2. And then once again, let's do parentheses around that 3 halves, just to be careful. And then we have to do an x. And what do we got there? Plus 4. And once again, somebody may have graphed something else on that calculator, so who knows what zoom you're at. You could be zoomed way into the origin. You could be zoomed out way out to the thousands. You don't know. And so that we all at least get somewhat the same graph, we'll go to zoom, which is that one right in the middle there, and standard. Again, you can either go down all the way or just hit 6. And we're hoping these two lines hit each other. They don't have to. Oh, well, they do. Now, you could guess where that is, or you could let the calculator figure it out for you. Okay. Now, we figured out zeros the other day, right? You can try to do that. Where did we go for that? Count. I think that's maybe a good place to go once again to calculate where they hit each other? Probably. So hit second and then calc. And what do you suppose is going to be the most helpful one now? Not zero. Yeah, intersect. The fifth one down there. Uh, six and seven, that's calculus, but five. So just go down to five or just hit five. Now you notice how it's kind of just blinking on one of them, correct? And it's saying first curve and it's even telling you which one. Do you agree that's the one that we put in first? Yeah, and you just use left and right, just get close. The reason you use left or right is because if you use up or down, it'll change which graph you're on. All right, that's what up and down do. Okay, and just get close. Yeah, it looks pretty close, right? And what are you suppose you're going to do once you get close? Same thing we did with zeros. Hit, enter. Say, yeah, I'm done. And now it's saying second curve. I'm on the second curve now. No, no, I'll prove it to you. See if I go right up. See, I'm on the second one. But for me, it actually gave me a pretty close one, didn't it? Actually, stuck me in there pretty close, right? I'm just trying to get about where they hit, and I'm going to hit. Then I ask for that guess again. You remember, you don't really have to do a whole lot on that one. Say, yep, sure, it looks good. There it is. Negative 2, comma, 1. Now, what exactly does that mean? Obviously, that's, that's where they hit each other. But what that means is if I put an x value of negative 2 into both of those originals, I'm going to get what out of both of them? I'm going to get 1. Okay, so they're both going to give me the same answer. Okay. And we can go back there and show it. So 
again, it's negative 2 comma 1. It's the solution because if I put negative 2 in there or I put negative 2 in there, I'm going to get 1 as the y value answer. It's the answer they share. Okay? It's the one they both have. Okay? Any questions on that? That was pretty simple, wasn't it? All right, let's go on to the next method, elimination method. This works out really well if they're both in what's called standard form. Okay. And basically what we're going to do is, at least the easiest way to do it, is write one on top of the other. Now, graphically, it's not going to work very well on this one because it's not set to y equals, especially with the calculators, right? And another reason it's not going to work very well is look at those numbers. That's going to hit quite a ways out there. Okay. Now, does anybody remember elimination? Because I could add these two equations together right now, but will I eliminate either one of the variables if I add them together? No, I won't. There's a lot of ways you could do it. But I think there's a quicker way in this case. Because basically I want the x's to cancel or the y's to cancel. The easiest way in this case is to take this entire equation and multiply it by... 4 is the quickest way. Why does that work? Because I'm going to get a negative 8x. Does that negative 8x help? No, but then I'm going to get a positive 4y. Does that help? Yeah. But you notice, am I just multiplying just whatever I want by 4? No, you have to multiply the entire equation by 4 because then it's still the same equation. So over here we've got 3x minus 4y equals 1200. Notice I didn't touch that one at all. But this one gets transformed a little bit. How about uh, 4 times negative 550? What do we got there? 2, 2, 0, 0, yep. Now, how come I didn't go for the x's? Could I have eliminated the x's instead? Yeah, it would have been more work. I would have had to go into positive 6 and negative 6, right? It would have been more work. Could have done it. Well, unless you really like multiplying by fractions, I guess you could have done it only with one of them. Now, when I add these two equations together, 3x minus 8x is negative 5x, these become 0y, right? Negative 4y plus 4y, gone. Equals, well, that works out actually fairly nice, doesn't it? Negative 1,000, right? Remember, the, I'm really trying to solve very similar problems that I did in the first one. It just was given to me in a different way. And so we're going to need a answer. Divide by negative 5. X is? Because the negative divided by negative is a positive, right? 200. But wait a minute. In the first example, we had an ordered pair that told me where the answer was. We only have x. Yeah, you got to find one. So do I have to go back and start a completely different elimination? No, could you? Yeah, it would work. But probably the easiest way is to look back at your originals, and I would always suggest going to your originals, and finding out, well, which one kind of has y at least as most by itself as possible. And I think it's probably this second one over here, huh? Just at least y is kind of in there. So let's substitute x pretty much right in there. So it's negative 2 times 200. Whoops. Plus y equals negative 550. Okay. Again, you could have substituted into the other one because it's, again, where these two lines are supposed to intersect. So it should work in both. Yeah, we solve this. What's that? Negative 400 plus y equals negative 550. We're almost there. Add 400. So y is negative 150. Now, is it okay to write your answer that way? Yeah, you bet. Or if you really like the ordered pair, that's fine. Again, the graphing calculator would have done this one, but you would have had to have gotten y equals. Okay. Yes. On uh, which one? Oh, okay. I, I chose to multiply by 4 up here because I was looking at this. I saw a 3x and a negative 2x, and I'm like, well, I'd have to go to 6. So I'd have to multiply both equations. And then I looked here, and I saw a negative 4y and a positive 1y. And I said, boy, if I just multiply that by 4, then these will cancel. They'll be exact opposites of each other. And so I figured that would be easier than multiplying both equations. There are times that there's no way around that. You're going to have to multiply both equations by something to get to nice numbers. Again, like I said, unless you really like to multiply by fractions, sometimes you are just probably pick the easiest way. But I could have done it the other way with the x's. Because then it ended up right here. 
and the Y is canceled for me, or it got eliminated, which is why it's called the elimination method. But again, it's an ordered pair, so it works good. Any questions on that? Okay, so that's two ways. Again, we're finding where the two lines hit, or the two equations at this point. And we've got one more substitution method. So the first method worked out really well if they give you like a y equals, right? That graphing calculator done with them, right? The second one works really well if it's in both in standard form. This one works fairly well, you know, if just one of them is solved for the variable. Is one of these solved for the variable? Yeah, it says x equals negative 3y minus 2. It actually says that's what x equals, okay? And so what we're going to do is we're going to substitute that into the other equation. So this x equals this right here, right? So wherever I see an x in the other one, that's what I'm going to replace it with, okay? Or substitute it with. So there's a 3 right here. I'm going to write it down. That x right there is going to get replaced with what we know x to be in this problem. And in this problem, x has to be negative 3y minus 2. Is everybody okay with the how I just put that in there? Good. I'm just replacing x with what it is. It's the same thing as in this last problem when I replaced x with what it was. It's just x isn't as pretty this time. Okay, I replaced x with 200 back here. Well, now it's negative 3y minus 2. So do I still have a plus 10y? Yeah. Do I still have an equal sign? Yep. And a negative 4? Yes, I do. But you notice what happened. I went from two equations with two variables, and now I have one equation with only one variable. So one of those variables has been you know, taken care of. Okay, and now you solve. Okay, is everybody okay with the substitution then? So here we go. Negative 9y minus 6 plus 10y equals negative 4. Well, that works out nice. These two here are already on the same side of the equal sign, so just combine them. And negative 9y and a positive 10y, that's 1y. Minus 6 is still there. And the equal sign and the negative 4 are still there. Now we just got to get y by itself. Add 6. So y is, because these cancel, 2. Uh, that's not enough, though. We need a, a coordinate. But that's this is the nice thing about substitution. Once you find the one value, you already know that something is set up for the other one just based on how you did things. So where that y is, just replace it with 2. All right? So x equals negative 3. y is 2 minus 2. So x is negative 6 minus 2. x is negative 8. Again, you can leave it that way. Or if you like to see the ordered pair, you can do that. Any questions? I'd say there'd be some good ones at this point. If you remember back to Algebra 2. So, so far, we've had two lines that have done something like that, correct? They have hit each other at a point. There are actually two other possibilities of what two lines can do. They could be parallel. Very good. So here's option one of what can happen, and that's what all of them have done so far. Option two is that these lines could be parallel. Okay. And the other option not skew, but very good word and way to bring it back from geometry. Because we're talking only on one dimension here. We're not going all over the place like we did in geometry. Yes? True, and how would that happen with lines? Nope, but it's got to be a line. But you're right, it could hit more than once. Yes? Not quite. Well, kind of, actually. What if that's where your first line is in... That's where your second line is. How many times do those hit? Yeah, a lot, right? An infinite number of times. 
because they're the same line. Do you agree? Two lines could do that, right? Okay. So what's going to happen here, and I'll give you an example. I'll give you a very simple example. Okay, just looking at it, but by the way, I made a very simple one, right? By the way we did this, you agree those are the same line, really? Okay, I think you can kind of see that. Okay, so that would actually be this one. Sorry. So what's going to happen when you do this is you're going to go probably take this one and try and multiply it by negative 2, right, to do elimination method. So it's going to be a negative 2 here, a negative 2 there, and a negative 4 there. What happens? Everything's gone, right? So you're left with basically 0 equals 0. Is that true? 0 equals 0, right? Or you could end up with 5 equals 5. But the key is, is the variables went away, meaning they had no bearing on the problem, and I was left with something that was true. That means they're the same line. If something similar happens, right, you'd go through, multiply by negative 2, right? You agree that's what would happen? 0 equals negative 16. What? 0 equals negative 16? Once again, the variables went away, right? It meant they had no bearing on the problem. But 0 equals negative makes no sense at all, which means they don't hit at all. Okay? So if you end up with something that's true like that, you know, 5 equals 5, 10 equals 10, 0 equals 0, they're the same line. If you end up with gibberish, like 0 equals negative 16 or 5 equals 10, all right, then they're parallel. Okay. Any other questions? 